Hi everyone, welcome to the Lincam TV show. I'm your host Cassie Vitali, and joining to me today is a very special guest. It's Governor Deval Patrick. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Lynn. honored to be with you. Thank you. Well, we are honored to have you here in our studios in Lynn. And I know that you are someone, as a governor, who has frequently visited all sorts of constituents mm -hmm. all throughout uh, Massachusetts. And we appreciate your time in Lynn. Thank you. I know you came in a couple weeks ago, and we're actually taking a look at uh, some of the transportation that we have here. Mm -hmm. And the timing is really interesting because I know you have a lot of ideas and um, some plans laid out for what you would like to see with growth in respect to transportation, That's education. Right. Yep. So um, knowing that you had recently given your state of the state address where mm -hmm. you lay out a plan, can you talk a little bit about some of your ideas for transportation? Sure. Well, you know, interesting, Cassie, uh, again, thank you for having me on. And um, they're not, they're not uh, so much my ideas as, uh, as the people's ideas. I mean, people, they want uh, easier access, um, uh, easier connectivity uh, with family and friends and work mm -hmm. and recreation opportunities, the airport and so forth. It's true in Lynn. It's true in every corner of the Commonwealth. And the places where transportation has been uh, modernized and updated uh, have unlocked economic growth and opportunity in those parts of the Commonwealth and where it has not, when we haven't made those investments, it's, it's, uh, it's slowed us down. And so uh, um, what we've done is really um, put the facts back to the legislature and, and to the people of the Commonwealth and said, look, if you want a 21st century transportation system and you want the kind of education system which deals with concentrations of poverty and the kids that we are leaving um, uh, behind, um, we can have that. And we can have it by paying a little bit more uh, in, uh, in taxes um, and, uh, and getting a lot more for ourselves right now but uh, for a generation to come as well. When you talk about taxes, and sometimes right now people get concerned sure. with um, you know things being maybe a little tighter for them, and they hear that, um, perhaps they wonder what that will mean for them. Right. But we are also talking about investing in our future right. and investing in some major changes that, like you said, can really spur some economic um, you know, growth and improvement. Exactly. What would you say for people who are looking at it from the taxpayer perspective? Well, first of all, I look at it from a taxpayer <laughs> perspective. I think everybody everybody does, and that's entirely natural. And uh, I don't want anybody to think that I'm taking this lightly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big thing to ask people to pay more. Um, but I've heard an awful lot of people say they want more. Mm -hmm. And after having reduced headcount by 6,000 positions and cut uh, hundreds of millions of dollars out of the state budget, um, uh, some of it uh, precipitated by the recession, but some of it just because it was time to be more efficient and, and effective. It's quite clear to me that we are not going to be able to reform ourselves to the 21st century and that there's a way to do it without um, uh, so burdening people or making ourselves as a whole um, anti-competitive when it comes to how we compare with other states in the region and with other states around the country uh, with which we uh, compete. So what I have proposed is actually to cut the sales tax mm -hmm. to 4.5 percent, that's down from six and a quarter percent today, devote all of those sales tax uh, proceeds to public infrastructure, so uh, transportation chief among them, but school building uh, uh, projects and other public infrastructure, and then raise the, uh, uh, the income tax from uh, five and a quarter percent, one percentage point to six and a quarter percent, and at the same time double the exemptions, which is the sort of the threshold at which the uh, state income tax kicks in. So in fact, for about 60 percent of taxpayers, their total taxes would go down. Um, but for people who are making a little bit more and doing a little bit, a uh, little bit better, they would contribute a little bit more. And all in, uh, we'd uh, we'd really build uh, a uh, a commonwealth we can be proud of for a generation. Well, I know when you came to Lynn recently and you were talking about some of these ideas, mm -hmm. you were speaking with Senator McGee, um, Representative Walsh, Representative Fennell. When you're going to the different cities, um, the Mayor Kennedy was there. Right. Are you finding that a lot of the city leaders um, are eager to work with you because they also have similar ideals? Well, I think, uh, uh, first of all, the, the, the leaders you mentioned, um, uh, uh, Senator McGee, who, is, who has been chair of transportation, uh, and Representatives uh, Fennell and Walsh are among the very best partners I could possibly hope for. And they're to, you know, they, don't, they don't agree with everything uh, we propose. and, and uh, uh, and may not agree with every element of what we have proposed this time. But, you know, for once, I'm trying to get members of the legislature, members of the business community, members of the public 
to focus on what we want to do and why mm -hmm. before we get to how. You know, it's very few people quarrel um, with, uh, in, certainly in this neighborhood, about connecting uh, the blue line to Lynn. Um, you see what can happen along the waterfront, the OGE uh, space where the uh, uh, land, where the, um, the uh, power lines have uh, taken down, we were a part of that. You see the educational opportunities up here, you see the workforce opportunities up here, the housing uh, opportunities mm -hmm. here in, uh, in Lynn, uh, and further north and further south uh, as well. You can see what, it, what a ferry service um, to downtown Boston or to the airport or to the future um, uh, resort casino at, uh, uh, at uh, Suffolk. Suffolk Downs, mm -hmm. should that come to pass, um, might mean in terms of people's op uh, opportunities. And those uh, examples are a uh, sort of a microcosm, they are a subset of examples just like that all over the Commonwealth, where with a little bit of investment, I mean, I don't mean to sugarcoat it, I mean, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars, but, but some targeted strategic investment, we can really accelerate job growth here in the Commonwealth. So if a little bit from each person was going into it, we could see a whole lot of That's exactly potential right. change. That's exactly right. And I think the other part of that, and I'm sorry to oh, um, go on, but the, the other part of that is that people want, uh, and, uh, and I think they, the legislative delegation are very um, aware of this, they want to make sure there's accountability because mm -hmm. a lot of us have bad memories of the big dig and, uh, and you know, big promises made and a lot of money spent and we didn't know until we were nearly done with it uh, how much more had been spent than, uh, than was promised and how much more debt had been incurred and we didn't really know where all the money uh, had, uh, uh, had gone or in, and weren't very satisfied with all the workmanship. So there's got to be accountability built in and I've thought about, about that as well because this has to extend and would extend long after I've, uh, I've left the governor's office. Well, one of the things that I'm curious to ask you about too is we, we know that we're talking about transportation, we're talking about education mm -hmm. um, and dealing with parts of um, infrastructure. When you're talking about transportation improvements, for example, how do you feel that that would impact a person in Lynn and also how would it impact the education? Um, you know, how do they tie it together? Because so, I see that they do, but... Well, in fact, it's so interesting about so much about uh, public policy, it all connects. People tend to, uh, all of us, in and out of government, we talk about uh, policy choices in, in silos, when in fact, in real life, um, you know, getting around, getting to and from a job, getting to and from uh, school, having a good school to go to and from, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and different educational opportunities, they are all connected in our own lives and what we have to do is have the kind of uh, policy and the kind of uh, leadership that connects them in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we've been trying to, uh, to do. So um, you can imagine uh, uh, living in Lynn, um, uh, studying at North Shore Community for example for uh, opportunities that would um, make you eligible for work in one of the life sciences companies for mm -hmm. example. Um, being able to get to downtown Boston conveniently without driving on public transportation that ran until two or three in the morning um, so that when you finished working you could hang out with your pals and, um, and, uh, and come home to an affordable uh, uh, place to live here mm -hmm. in, in Lynn. Um, you can imagine being able to uh, avail yourselves of those course choices at North, Cor North Shore Community College because it was in fact affordable through our investments in the, in the Mass Grants um, uh, program. And if you have kids, being assured that they could, uh, they could have a longer school day mm -hmm. in, the, in the middle school or that they had access in the very early ages to uh, high quality early education. The things that prepare young folks um, uh, for academic success for the rest of their lives and in fact for uh, career success thereafter. So um, we're not trying to do everything. It's not, a, uh, it's not a wish list, believe me, my wish list is a lot longer, um, but it is about doing a few things very well and sustaining that over time mm -hmm. so that we really lift the whole Commonwealth and not just parts of it, but everybody. And that sounds excellent, and I think people have seen that that's what you're working for, and I know your state of the state address, people can look at the plan that you've laid out um, right. online. Mm -hmm. And we actually want to take a moment and go to a clip right now of when you did come to visit in Lynn to show people where you were looking. He was down by the um, MBTA, and we want to give you an opportunity to see that he was meeting and uh, getting a chance to get the view that we all have living here in the city. So we're going to go to a clip, and then we'll come right back and talk.
Thanks. Hi everyone, I'm here in Lynn downtown with Secretary Davey and we're talking to him today about a conference that's going to be happening in just a few moments along with Governor Deval Patrick. So could you let everybody know uh, what today is really about? Sure, well the uh, day after the uh, State of the Commonwealth address the Governor gave yesterday, uh, he's here in Lynn uh, to talk to folks uh, about what transportation investment means in the state and obviously we're here in downtown Lynn um, at the commuter rail station an important uh, transit hub for both the city of Lynn and frankly for folks in Boston and then what it could be in the future. Now that like you can see that's where the ferry will be where the dredging is going on but as part of the waterfront plan a boardwalk has to be built so once the ferry's done and then the intervening properties along the way have to continue boardwalks so you actually could walk across walk up to the boardwalk and go to the ferry. That's like the, uh, those are, st those are uh, uh, storage buildings for the uh, owners that own the flood tower, which you probably see the flood tower building. Yep. Yep. But again, it's it's so close, you really would have four modes of transportation. Yep. Yes. You know, access to the Boston Harbor, right? it's 28 minutes to Boston by ferry, right. which we're hoping to have by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. so, but it really, it's, it's, it's so close to this, it really is. And if you think anywhere else, there's no place in Massachusetts that would have the four. But, you know, yeah. even in Boston, it's right. kind of, it, it's not. You know that, that this place is yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you can is see, the, now, this uh, is, now this is subject for development. That's pri private property that they're trying to sell right there, so you could be developing it right, right in front. Not here, this isn't, but across the road. Yeah, okay. And then, and you can see there's empty space over there. It's about 70 acres of open space. And then, like I said, the G property has, you know, Which is further down that way? Further down, right along the tracks. So it's about, I don't know, three quarters of a mile down. You put station in there. And you get 70 acres there. And then you're right across. From, and we've zoned for high rise there. Mm -hmm. Because the G is there, it doesn't mm -hmm. prohibit, you know, it doesn't inhibit the community being connected mm -hmm. to there. Mm -hmm. So you can put 20 story towers on the water. You can do that on the G property as well. So, I mean, all those are come out are huge, and that's where the transportation investment and the, really the rapid transit is the key. Mm -hmm. Is the uh, you envision the ferry is year round? Yes. Yeah. They can run it about 340 days a year. Now, if you see the scene in the heart to the end of winter, it's about a three-minute open water ride. Mm -hmm. so unless it's a northeast, even if it's rough, you're only three or four minutes on the open water, so they can run it year round. And then you can see the harbor islands. There's nothing off of Boston that allows us. There's no fair, there's no service to have around It's not in Boston. Mm -hmm. So we envision that. You know, and in Japan and Europe, they focus on the uh, signals. Here, they focus on crash worthiness. So what does that mean? These vehicles are heavier, bigger, um, and if, you know, God forbid, there was a, a crash, it could absorb um, the crash in the body of the car, much like a, a vehicle. Is this a vehicle in the U.S.? This one is, and these are. The other ones over there are not, which is why I brought them over here. Um, but um, FRA has been showing some more flexibility, and California, Marin, and Sonoma County have recently bought, uh, uh, purchased uh, DMUs, and there's now a domestic manufacturer in, uh, in the last couple of years. So, uh, so we have talked about you know, looking at the you know, pilot service potentially here for not only Lynn, but we talked about Fairmont and a few other opportunities yeah. where it makes sense. And you have subway-like service. It's every 10 or 15 minutes, right. not commuter rail, which is usually every hour or half hour. And it's smaller. You can have two cars, not the big bulky ones. Um, and then they're, um, they pull themselves. There's an engine right in there as opposed to having to be pulled out. Similar to an old bud line? Like exactly a bud line. Exactly right. Absolutely. Old bud line cars. It all comes back, doesn't uh -huh. it? Yeah. <laughs> it does. <laughs> back to the future. Oh, so. And then, you know, the question is, is can we get a vehicle that would allow it to run on the blue line and then shift over so you wouldn't have to build track to extend it? Could you use the current infrastructure? I think this is the chairman's point, to reduce the cost and be creative. So that's something we're looking at right now uh, to so, see if we can do so that. So is the gauge of the blue line the same as the gauge for commuter rail yes. here? Yes. 
Okay, so the, the real challenge is signals to make sure that the, the car can talk and respond to both commuter rail signals and blue line signals, very different technologies. <laughs> so for me, if you get off the commuter rail, you can walk across the platform and have a platform up on the quicker transit, right yeah. to Logan Hill, Fort yeah. 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 look at it and see what I need. Mean. You know, I mean, it really, so this would be a center for that kind of activity. And, and, then it the, would be, and then it would, obviously, the economic development would be. If the straight extension is a seven or eight hundred million dollar project, what's the what's what's well, plan B? Well, that, well, that, well that's we, I don't know if we've priced it yet, but yeah. this is just. I mean, we've been pushing forever, still not on the plan. Mm -hmm. So how do we jumpstart something? Mm -hmm. I would think it's going to be substantially less because mm -hmm. you're utilizing a lot of the same infrastructure right. Right. instead of building a whole new set of infrastructure coming down. Right. So I don't know the number, but we could. That's not good school. Yeah. I mean, I, you know I'm very keen on trying to figure out this, how to use the PMU yeah. uh, technology, because I think, I think it's, it's so clever. Um, but what I had said earlier, and I think is important, is that if you can do it here, and you can model it here, yeah. and there's other options for you to take, say, the Orange Line and connect it in areas that are underserved mm -hmm. through a commuter rail area, it similarly is placed like the North. Yeah. yeah. I mean I think you open up opportunities here and elsewhere. Yeah. Instead of building a whole new infrastructure, yeah. you can utilize what you have yeah. in a much cost more cost effective mm -hmm. way and get both and still have both yeah. uh, you know the commuter rail and the, the subway system. Right. So I mean that's why I think it's unique to look at it differently. Mm -hmm. It opens up good idea. It's outside the box yeah. but but it does it does open other doors and I think maybe we get federal money, this is a model, we can show it works mm -hmm. here. And then nationally, the same situation. I'm sure in Philadelphia, New York, and other places where they have both. They must be looking. got, the you know, you know. Let's let's share if you got the right way to do it yeah. safely. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Hi everyone, welcome back. So we just took a look at a clip from when uh, Governor Patrick was here a couple weeks ago. It was cold that day. It was day. very cold <laughs> that day and he was taking a look uh, with Senator McGee and Representatives Fennell and Walsh to um, see what the system is here for our um, MBTA. And he's and you've seen it before, but it was a chance for you to kind of come together right. and talk with the transportation um, Secretary well, well, and right? you know, there's so. some great opportunities um, to use new technology to, to solve some of the issues uh, in Lynn in particular. Mm -hmm. There's, a, there's a, uh, a vehicle called a DMU, which is a diesel mm -hmm. multiple unit. Mm -hmm. And it's a, basically a subway car that runs on commuter rail tracks. And you can imagine having those come every 10 or 15 minutes yeah, and connect up with Wonderland so that the commuter rail um, you know, could even be expressed from further north on mm -hmm. in, but you'd have a subway uh, type service um, here in Lynn. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the things like that that we have to be open to. I think the point is, um, I, what I really want is for for us to finally, you know, let's let's have an adult conversation about about government. What is mm -hmm. it we want government to do and not do, um, and how do we actually pay for it? Um, because I think. When you think about the, uh, uh, about the roads we have now, the schools we have uh, today, the airport we have today, mm -hmm. our grandparents decided they were going to sacrifice so we would have that today. Mm -hmm. um, and it's up to us today to make those same kinds of choices because if we don't invest today for tomorrow, um, then, the, uh, then, the, then the Commonwealth is at risk of going into decline. It's not going to happen on my watch because I'm going to do everything to make sure it doesn't. Uh, and we've been coming out of recession faster and stronger than the rest of the country because we have been making um, the investments we can. But it's time to take it to the next level. And I know you're encouraging people to have this conversation from all over the state. You right. want people to come forward, not just the mayors and the representatives and the senators who are cl clearly invested in it, but you want um, your constituents to come Absolutely. forward and talk about this. I want people to talk to each other. Talk to, uh, to you know, when you're sitting down at the at the uh, at the at the kitchen table, talk about it. Um, get informed about what we're actually uh, proposing. The information is available online at mm -hmm. the uh, at the mass.gov site. There are um, maps that show exactly where the transportation projects would be, and mm -hmm. uh, other diagrams that show the types of education investments we're uh, we're talking about. 
Um, there's more than one way to accomplish, uh, mm -hmm. to accomplish this, but all of it is going to involve some uh, additional revenue, some new taxes or fees in order to make it work. Uh, and if you can support that and see your way to making that kind of sacrifice, then I ask you to call your representative or, uh, or your senator uh, and call the speaker and Senate, uh, Senate president down in Beacon Hill and register your support. It makes a difference. And when you're getting people to agree, you know, yes, we need to all invest a little bit more, the return for what you're talking about with respect to transportation improvements and educational opportunity, the idea is that will spur the economy and they will see quite a return if they're able to go ahead That's and be a part exactly of it. That's exactly right. A little, a little investment by all of us today means a lot of jobs now and in the future. And they are construction jobs. They are blue collar jobs. They're white collar uh, jobs. And uh, if we do this as we have proposed to do it, they will happen in every corner of the Commonwealth. And have you seen other places that you can think of where um, investments in the transportation have really in Massachusetts started to spur some of those changes of like what we're talking about for potentially seeing in Lynn? Well, for example, we, uh, we worked very hard uh, with the lieutenant governor taking the lead in negotiating with CSX to buy rights of way so we, we could continue commuter rail mm -hmm. out to uh, Worcester and make it more frequent. Um, that train to Worcester, uh, which goes some number of times uh, a day, together with other public investments in, the, in downtown Worcester, in the train station, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in infrastructure, has spurred just a, an explosion of activity in, uh, in the Commonwealth's second largest city. Everywhere investment has been made, when it's been made uh, strategically, anywhere in our history uh, as a country has been good for the local economy. Um, we haven't been doing this in a systemic way and in a big way for a long time in America. Mm -hmm. And the infrastructure shows it, and it's really time for us to turn that around. Also, when you're talking about the transportation of the T, you have a lot of people when they're driving, you know, um, roads and bridges and traffic That's are right. all things that are starting to, um, you know, show up. And you're seeing that if people could take public transportation, it would lighten the load on the roadways. Is that also something that you're looking at is that, okay, this could be a means for some of these people who are driving would instead now take public transit. That's right, and convenient parking by, uh, by public transit. I should say that the transportation plan isn't just about the T. Uh, it's also about roads, uh, uh, bridge Bridges, safety. Mm -hmm. it's, about, uh, it's about ferry services. Uh, it's about uh, connectivity to, uh, to the airports, not mm -hmm. just Logan, but, the, but Worcester Airport. There's an airport out in western Massachusetts, which would be I believe a really great location for, for freight mm -hmm. um, because of its um, particular uh, position close to uh, highways and, uh, and rail lines. Um, you know, there are things of this kind in, in that transportation um, uh, uh, framework that are needed all over the Commonwealth. Some of them very local, mm -hmm. um, some of them more um, regional in, uh, in nature. But I am confident that if we, if we do them, and they are a handful, um, mm -hmm. some of them expensive, but uh, a, hand, a handful, as I say, we'll see uh, the kind of economic prosperity expanding around the Commonwealth that people really want. And when we talk about, uh, just to go back for a minute, you were mentioning the um, percentage of if we reduce the sales tax and mm -hmm. if we then increase some of the income tax, um, what, is, what is the benefit or what are the benefits to, to making that be the switch? Is it because the people with the income taxes we know are people who are working or what would that for people who are maybe wondering why less on the sales tax and more in the Well the way the reason I propose it the way I did is because the sales tax is fundamentally regressive meaning everybody pays the same we even if you even if you're poor poor right um, the income tax cannot be made progressive without a change in the constitution but you can do some things and we have a, so we have a constitutionally required flat tax mm -hmm. but you can do some things to make it a little bit more progressive by changing the uh, uh, the uh, personal exemptions so um, it's really about rebalancing it mm -hmm. if we bring the sales tax down um, and we and in, in this what I propose is to bring it down lower than it was when I took office mm -hmm. and we bring the uh, uh, the income tax up together with uh, doubling the uh, exemptions um, then we get a more gradual tax burden on people so that people are able to pay according to their ability uh, to do so. And I think that's more fair. I, I would say also, Cassie, that uh, when you're done with all that, our sales tax, our income tax, and our business tax, which we cut uh, in the last couple of uh, years, would be competitive with all of our competitor uh, states and with other states around the country. 
I appreciate you explaining it a little bit more in depth because I know people, like we said, are you know always thinking um, how things will affect them as as taxpayers. But I think that we have seen a lot of times right now with the economy that some of the people are struggling more sure. th perhaps than others. Everyone to an extent, but some people obviously um, like who are out of work or right. um, may not have as much That's income. Right. And I, so. you know, I don't think anybody runs for office to raise taxes. Um, no, you know, it's just a. <laughs> it's, it's a part There's of never a good time. It's always unpopular. Um, but I, I know people want growth, uh, and they want uh, prosperity, and we deserve it in the Commonwealth. You know, we have so many things going for us. Uh, a long, um, uh, disciplined uh, engagement in improving the schools, which has been enormously uh, important, and we've continued that, and I think taken it to the next, uh, 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 to the next level. Uh, we are cultivating these innovation sectors where we're getting growth today and that's why our unemployment rate is well below the national average. I am so convinced that if we make these investments we can accelerate that and reach more more people and that's why I'm, I'm willing to make the ask of the, of the people of the Commonwealth. Well I appreciate your time today. We're actually just about out of time and I wanted to thank you for taking the time to explain it to people thank you and for having that me. you come to the city and you make yourself available and if people want to they can reach out um, and also go to MassGov to read exactly. your plan. Please do. Okay. Please do. And give us feedback. Yes, please. So he's asking for your feedback, and it's important for you to make your voice heard if you have ideas. Thank you so much, Governor Great. Patrick. Thank it was such a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Great to see you. You too, and thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time you come out.